Designing things is hard. You must go to school for years doing unfun things like maths and physics to become qualified to build most things professionally. And because humans are humans and not calculators, mistakes are bound to occur. In this video, I'll show you 10 bizarre and noteworthy examples of these human errors. Amazing! Number 10. Aircraft Carrier Runways Aircraft carriers were a significant factor during World War II due to how important having air superiority had become. Because the planes of that era had much more limited flight ranges than they do now, being able to land in the middle of the ocean was a huge advantage. Unfortunately, making this landing in the middle of the ocean was seriously difficult. The runway on top of the ships was so small that in order to stop in time, planes had to catch a wire that would slow their speed. This was also difficult for pilots to do, and so landing was perilous. Imagine driving your car to the edge of the Grand Canyon, and the only thing between you and going over the edge is a couple of your drunk friends holding some dental floss. Needless to say, there were many disastrous crashes due to this design, especially since planes waiting to take off were positioned at the end of the runway. But there was a seemingly simple solution. They set the runway at a 9 degree angle, instead of being straight. This has allowed planes to simply pull up, if they miss the wire, and circle around for another attempt. Number 9. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge You can easily break an uncooked spaghetti noodle by simply flicking it. However, you can't break a cooked spaghetti noodle so easily, because of course the cooked noodle can bend in response to the pressure. If you grasp this concept, you are officially one step ahead of the engineers who designed the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Unlike most large bridges, this bridge was built completely solid, without any holes, sort of like an uncooked noodle. For instance, take the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, which can actually move an entire six feet from side to side in the wind. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge, with no holes and therefore no give, simply collapsed due to the mundane occurrences of a windy day. With no holes for the wind to pass through, the bridge took the full force of the gale. Number 8. The Hyatt Regency Walkway 1 plus 1 equals 2, except for instances of supporting aerial walkways with metal rods that have to bear large amounts of weight. The Hyatt Regency Walkway in Kansas City collapsed because the people in charge decided that it would be easier to just use two metal rods where they were going to use just one long one. I mean, imagine how hard it would be to move around the one big metal rod. It was probably super heavy. This original plan would have suspended both walkways from the ceiling with a single rod that went through both of them stacked one on top of each other. Unfortunately, the two rod plan, which had the top walkway connected to the ceiling with one rod, and the second walkway connected to the first with a second rod, left the entire weight of the structure on that first rod, and the whole thing fell to the ground and hundreds of people died. Number 7. Square Windows The Haviland Comet was the first attempt at creating a commercial jetliner. The first attempts, however, failed spectacularly, disintegrating mid-air and leaving 56 people dead. Engineers were baffled, because the problem was so bizarrely simple. It had blown up, because it had been built with square windows. The next time you pass by an older house, take a look at the windows. They're most likely cracked around the corners, more so than anywhere else. This is because the sharp edges of squares create stress concentration points and when you're a plane going extremely fast, extremely high off the ground, it really concentrates a lot of stress, enough to destroy the whole thing in an instant. This is why planes now have rounded windows, so that the stress is distributed equally around the whole frame. Number 6. The City Group Center if the city group had gone forward as initially planned, and engineer Joel Weinstein had never double checked the whole thing, it very possibly could have destroyed all of Manhattan. The entire project is a lesson in why you should be flexible with your plans sometimes. The hazardous design initially came about because architect William Lemessurier wanted to build his skyscraper on a certain site, but that certain site was already in use by St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Rather than looking for another site, he decided it would be best to simply build a skyscraper right above the little church. If you think that putting a skyscraper on stilts instead of on the ground sounds crazy, you are correct. It's so crazy, in fact, that had Weinstein not warned them to weld on wind joints instead of bolt them, the Red Cross estimated that the death toll resulting from the collapse would have been roughly 200,000 and that 156 blocks would have been damaged. 
bolting, it turns out, is not a substitute for welding. To understand the difference, imagine if you cut your finger off and the doctor surgically reattached it to your hand. That would be like welding. If he just grabbed some duct tape to attach it back on your hand, that would be more like bolting. Number five, Santos, Brazil. The city of Santos, Brazil is famous for both producing Pele and having extraordinarily bad engineering. About 100 buildings in this city are at an angle, essentially taking away anyone's right to ever make fun of the Leaning Tower of Pisa ever again. The buildings were created before Brazil decided to have specific laws put in place for how deep foundations had to be, so they're built on foundations that are only 15 feet deep, about a third of the necessary depth. They were also built on soft, unstable clay. Oddly enough, people still live in these severely crooked buildings. Only one has ever been straightened out, and the process cost half a million dollars. Presumably, if people are willing to live in a slanted building, then there isn't a lot of incentive to pay the money to straighten it out. If you yourself are interested in owning one of these jauntily angled structures, you can purchase one for only $30,000. And just to show that first world countries aren't immune to similar mistakes, the Kansai International Airport in Japan was built on top of sand and was sinking at a rate of 20 inches per year in 1994. Number 4. Tropicana Field home of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. This field is hazardous enough to a game of baseball to make it seem like it would fit better in Mario Superstar Baseball than in the MLB. The ceiling of the stadium, which does a great job of blocking the rain, also does a great job of blocking home runs. There are four large catwalks hanging off the ceiling that have blocked innumerable hits from leaving the field. They also hold the lights, which occasionally rain superheated glass down onto the field when they get hit by balls. All in all, the field has been criticised as being a truly ridiculous way to design a baseball stadium. Number 3. Walt Disney Concert Hall The Walt Disney Concert Hall definitely cannot be criticised for looking boring, with its wavy jumble of walls making for an unorthodox design. This design, however, also makes for very unorthodox problems. The curvature of the walls combined with their highly reflective nature, it turned out, created a super villainous heat ray. The building has blinded drivers and heated sidewalks to 140 degrees like a giant kid with a magnifying glass. Fortunately, they later corrected their mistake by sandblasting the walls to reduce glare so that they don't accidentally incinerate some pedestrians. The Vidara Hotel in Las Vegas suffered from the same problem, melting nearby plastic and actually burning guests with its own heat ray. Number 2. The Lotus Riverside Building the Lotus Riverside Building Complex in Shanghai was going to be a complex of 11 buildings, and most of the flats had actually already been sold off before construction was even completed. Things continued to go well for the project, until one day, one of the buildings just up and fell on its side, which is not usually something that you would want to have happen to a building. While the building itself was fine, the reason this happened was because workers piled the dirt excavated in order to build the underground parking garage into a landfill beside a nearby river. They then proceeded to ignore warnings about how bad of an idea it was to dam up a river right next to your construction project. Soon afterwards, it rained, the river flooded its banks, and the building's foundations gave way. Number 1. The Isaac Peril Submarine The key to submarines is that, unlike boats, they travel underneath rather than on top of the water. And unlike rocks, they don't just sink straight to the bottom of the ocean. Navantia, the shipbuilder of the Spanish Navy, must have temporarily forgotten this principle when they constructed the Isaac Peril sub and then realised that it was 75 tonnes overweight. It's fair to say it would be great at submerging, which is fine, but it wouldn't be so great at resurfacing. The submarine's engine simply wouldn't be strong enough to pull it back up again. It would be a bit like putting a moped engine in a semi-truck. The submarine will have to be totally redesigned, delaying the project by years and costing the Spanish government millions of dollars. The company admitted to the comical error simply by stating that deviations related to the balance of weight had been found. So sort of like the same excuse most obese people make when standing on the weighing scales. While it certainly seems as though the infrastructure we rely on every day is foolproof, it isn't always. Which area do you think should have been avoided most easily? Let me know in the comment section down below. As usual, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe, clicking that bell icon to never miss another video. Thanks for watching.